Hallelujah. I feel sanctified. By the blood, sweat, and tears of our ancestors. Our ancestors didn't come here as free people. Our ancestors didn't come here as free people. Blood, sweat, and tears of our ancestors. I pray against. Yes, welcome to the Jamaica Young Police Channel. To our loyal viewers, subscribers, and Patreon members. At the channel, we are a group of law abiding citizens who believe in the rule of law and respect the rights of every citizen. But not the ones who do not subscribe to such behavior. We do believe in and support preemptive strikes because they save lives. This is a logical conclusion because preemptive strikes save lives and prevent the further loss of lives. We are all about saving lives at this channel. We at the channel aid criminals with a passion and do not want them over here. We do not want your views, your subscriptions, your likes or your comments. Please go elsewhere where the red carpet is waiting for you. Over here, we want you to go to prison or the departure lounge at Madden. Yeah, so if this is the first time here at the Jamaica Young Police Channel, we highly recommend subscribing to stay updated with our latest content. Hit the subscription button above, click the bell icon and select all. To receive notifications whenever we at the Jamaica Young Police Channel release a video. Remember that this channel is not an entertainment channel. You know entertainment channels give you a hybrid between 10 to 15 minutes. This is not an entertainment channel. So you have to go elsewhere if you want entertainment. Remember to give this video a thumbs up because you will find it helpful and informative. Please remember to share the video with your girlfriend, your boyfriend, mama, papa, side chick or side man and tell them to tell a friend about the Jamaica Young Police channel. You can join the Patreon squad. By doing so, you will gain access to exclusive content that cannot be played on YouTube due to various restrictions. To unlock this untapped collection of videos, click the link in the description box below. Join our Patreon community allows you to explore contents that complies with laws, rules and regulations while avoiding disruption to our channel's functionalities. You'll be able to see videos and you'll see photos, photographs, names of persons who have been killed and are and still waiting on justice like Rifle of the British crew, one of the British of the uh, of the British crew, and you'll see the people who are involved in the killing of these men and others, including Douglas Chambers, who was killed by PMP criminal organization members, and it it came from the top. And to date, the person, our person who have given given that order, has not been arrested and charged for that murder. So you can go to Patreon and you'll be able to see the face and name of those persons. So thanks for your continued support and we look forward to providing you with exceptional content. So moving on to today's video. Hallelujah! I feel sanctified. By the blood, sweat and tears of our ancestors. Our ancestors didn't come here as free people. Our ancestors didn't come here as free people. Blood, sweat and tears of our ancestors. Pray against yeah, so you see the reason why we remind you that let you hear Mark Golden lying, you know, use his fork tongue and lie, telling you if you're black, you know, if you have slave jeans in you, whether or not you want to believe it, if you're black and you're in the West, you have slave jeans in you. Your ancestors did not um, came this part of the world as tourists. They came here on slave ships. Yes, those ships were slave ships. So you did not came here. Your ancestors did not come to the came to the West as visitors or tourists. They came here as slaves, not indentured servants. Indentured servants were treated totally different, and they were mostly white people. Black people were indentured servants too, but in the long run, they, they, you know. They get the intention and servants in Jamestown 
Virginia to turn on the black people and that's how slavery started. So you see, the white man at all times, they always think in 10 step ahead than people who think about ethics. You have to understand it's a deer. They are always thinking how to manipulate people. So that's why we have a, a MI6 man who's in Jamaica. Yes, a MI6 spy. Um, his cover has been exposed, claiming he's Jamaican, that he is born in Jamaica. This is a project, you know, by MI6. The same thing that his ancestors have done in during slavery to our ancestors. Um, rob, rape, pillage, all kind of thing. He have done the same down there. And he had, guess what? He had conspirators there too. Traitors in Jamaica. But when everything is revealed, how will these people be treated? Will these people will be, you know, labeled as Pyra, Paria? Will these people be shunned, denounced, and make sure the books of history never forget them? You put their face on the covers of these books, textbook, to remind people that their ancestors in 2024 were, betr were traitors to the black people of Jamaica for a white British man, one man. So you're going to hear the things in that his ancestors benefited from our ancestors in Jamaica. So you watch, you listen, and this is part five. One more part coming up. So you have yourself. Enjoy this, guy. This is history. You're learning about yourself. Because Mark Golden said, you people don't read it. That's why I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. You stick to and communicate with you. I want to read. That's how I'm saying. Insulting or insulting a big time. So you watch, you listen, you decide. You know, historical events what happened to uh, our black sisters, black ancestors on the plantation by these um, depraved man gay Englishmen and what they have done to our ancestors in which they use their rifles to violate them, their anus and rectum, you know, and this happened during slavery. So you have to understand why Jamaicans are a whole because of this butt cracking thing and all of that you know it's genetic you understand what i'm saying so whatever the mother witness you know that is part you know because all of these things were done in in open you know that these white men um you know they, they would force themselves you know man onto the black men rape them tie them and foot and spread out and imagine you know you understand what i'm saying that side seeing your father your uncle being go, um, going through all those things and then um, the the pregnant mother you know the pregnant mothers would be watching their husbands uh, you know um, getting um, violated in that uh, that fashion so you know that's that's is gonna pass down through the umbilical card to the baby so it's become genetics it's a gen you understand you cannot change genetics so that trauma is still there the violence that you see in the Jamaican people today it's because of slavery too you understand we're not we're not gonna differentiate that you know Jama Jamaican people violence it, it, it's it's a genetic thing too you understand and it's all come from slavery because all Jamaican people yeah you understand what I'm saying so this is poetry and check it out this is historical thing I know a lot of Jamaican didn't even know about all these things that happened on the plantation because most Jamaicans don't read it five second things anything um, derogatory anything stupid it uh, you understand hey even police so you know this is the channel where we are educating about everything this is lgbtq plus month june 2022 so we are going to show you you know the things that our ancestors have been through during slavery check it out it's existence He has little idea of the high price he'll pay for his affair. While Courtney is away at school, Font Hill dabbles in politics, taking up his family's rotten borough parliamentary seat. But he soon tires of the House of Commons. William Beckford wasn't cut out to be an actor in the great drama of politics. His abilities were unquestionable, but his mind was too expanded for the needling details and double dealings of a political life. Instead, he sets his heart on a peerage 
and the title Lord Beckford of Font Hill. It will seal the family's rise from tradesmen to aristocrats. To the powerful influence of Chancellor Thurlow, it should be a formality. So the Royal College of Arms draws up a design. Young Beckford had a great interest in books of heraldry. His father's political fame didn't satisfy him, so he set out to find his ancestral honours on one side or the other up to John of Gaunt. He was full of imagination. But while waiting for his peerage, Fonthill makes the mistake of writing letters confiding his feelings for Courtney. Does he still really love me? The delightful days of Fonthill have not yet elapsed from his memory. Does he still dwell with pleasure in the recollection of what passed in our subterranean apartment? And the letters fall into the wrong hands. Does he still dwell with pleasure on the recollection of what passed in our subterranean apartment? Lord Loughborough has just married into the Courtney family and has developed a loathing for Font Hill. On silken beds, in the glow of transparent curtains. The very suggestion of guilt is enough to ruin Beckford in the eyes of polite society. I rather my son went up to London, paraded around with half a dozen Covent Garden halls. That would have done more than anything else to remove suspicion. If the case ever comes to court, Font Hill could hang. Beckford's conduct was heedless, not to say childish. But his enemies are powerful. And he is, I believe, not barbarously treated by an ill-judging world. Font Hill blames Courtney for his predicament, and the spell is broken. A certain young person whom I once thought to have been my dearest friend, but proved himself the meanest traitor and blackest enemy. You may guess who pulled the strings. With very good health. Fond Hill feels compelled to take his wife, Margaret, and baby daughter into exile on the continent. There's talk of Jamaica, but his wife is pregnant again, and it's considered too dangerous. Disease-ridden Jamaica is notorious for its high infant mortality, but among the slaves, the risks are even higher. <laughs> With their heavy workloads and meager diets, one in three slave women miscarry or lose their babies. Although planters have an interest in keeping their slaves healthy, their prejudices get in the way. Their women are delivered of children with little or no labour, and they have no more need of midwives than a female orangutan or any other wild animal. Five thousand miles away, Font Hill gains a second daughter, but loses a wife. Margaret dies in childbirth. Font Hill's mother comes to visit him in exile in Europe and take his children into her care. She will protect them from their father's disgrace and mould the next generation of Beckfords. He's left alone with his regrets and the blame of society. If an oracle might have said the truth, he will be rich and wealthy, the affectionate husband of the best of wives, the father of two lovely infants. And yet, an exile from his country, shunned by his countrymen. A brief, un 
unhappy visit to England convinces Font Hill that it's too soon to return home. He is persuaded to sail for Jamaica. The more I hear of Jamaica, the more I dread the climate, which I fully expect will wear my health away. But Font Hill never reaches his sugar plantations because he jumps ship in Portugal. Seeing this, his business advisor, Thomas Wildman, is about to seize his chance. It is said that this trade in sugar has a powerful effect on a man's ethics and principles. I would go so far as to say that it changes a man entirely. Tempted by the financial opportunities of Jamaica, Wildman sizes up one of his employer's land holdings known as Quebec. It was reported back to me from Jamaica that um, Beckford owned a fine run of virgin land at Quebec, which could be settled into a good sugar works at very little expense. I asked Mr. Beckford if he would like to give me the land at Quebec. Of course, I described it somewhat differently. My dear William, there is a piece of wasteland in the corner of the island. Yes, that's it. So he very generously presented me with 1,200 acres and 5,000 pounds to develop it. Wildman appoints his younger brother, James, to get the land cleared to grow sugarcane. Within months, they've poached 823 of Fonthill's slaves, leaving the Beckford plantations neglected. Well, how does he ever going to find out? Quebec meant us a considerable sum. Jamaica is infested with creditors and agents who work for their own profit and not for that of the planters. They'll lend him money and wish him well for a while, but they then commit every species of fraud and extortion. These men are no better than a flock of vultures. While absentee landowners risk being cheated, planters on the ground have their own problems. Each year, slaves attempt to run away, losing them productivity and spreading discontent. Some disappear for only a few days to see family. Others head for the mountains to join groups of rebels. Stop! Don't move! Stay right there! You're trying to do something for us! Sure, don't stand on that! Most runaways are captured or return. Either way, they're given harsh punishments to deter others. Sometimes the overseers add a sadistic twist of their own. Lime juice, for example, sharpens the sting of the whip. And although the legal limit is 39 strokes, 200 or even 300 lashes are not uncommon on remote plantations. Negroes are not burdened with the experience of anticipation, so the punishment when it comes is unexpected and sudden. The sorrow fades with the pain. The planters of the island of Jamaica have been unjustly accused of treating their Negroes with cruelty. But the truth is that these men inherited their slaves in much the same way as a man in England might inherit the lands and estates of his ancestors. In fact, there is no man in England who possesses more charity and clemency than the planter. So if there are instances of cruelty, they must happen without his knowledge. Whipping, mutilation, even execution are seen as acceptable penalties.
Hurry up! Master was 100 pounds by now! However hard the slaves are worked to produce sugar, yields gradually fall on older estates as the soil becomes exhausted. And Jamaica faces growing competition from other Caribbean sugar producers like Cuba and Haiti. Summerly finds that his profits are dropping while his costs are going up. A newly independent America no longer exports them cheap food and timber. There's a complicated system of debt and credit in the island. In fact, a man may not consider himself to be distinguished in Jamaica unless he's in debt. Summerly extends his credit with his merchant, putting up his estates as collateral. Some planters who find themselves unable to settle their overextended accounts are almost reduced to being slaves. The merchant charges commission at half percent. Two and a half percent is added to all the produce he sells and two and a half percent is taken from sales and invoices. He also charges interest at half percent on what he loans. And the interest is added to the capital every year making it bigger with the result that the sugar is sold at a loss even before it arrives in England. Better by far for the planter to borrow from anyone even at 6% than from his merchant at 5 Because once he becomes indebted to him, he becomes dependent. Possibly for life. Summerly is now relying on a successful crop to reduce his debts. After years shifting restlessly across Europe, William Beckford comes home to Font Hill. He remains ostracized by polite society and responds by building a seven-mile wall around his Wiltshire estate to shut out his enemies. How's it progressing here? Fairly well, sir. Yes, yes. I have been hunted down and persecuted. So I retreated into the center of my gloomy circle like a spider into the midst of its web. Alone, Font Hill decides to emulate his fictional Sultan Vathek and build a pleasure tower. But it's destined to become something much greater. Yes, uh, mm, position. Mm. Very attractive position. Fashionable royal architect James Wyatt is chosen to draw up the design. Up the valley. Yes, we are here. The building should be there. Pontill turns his back on the classical style of the day in favor of the dramatic detail of medieval religious architecture known as Gothic. And from those Gothic windows, one will be able to look straight down the valley at the lake. He's inspired by his memories of the magnificent monastery of Batala in Portugal and his brief flirtation with Catholicism. With each discussion, the design grows in ambition. I had wanted it to be the most spectacular house in England. Soon the building takes on the shape of a cross with a nave, transept and stained glass windows. There is the magnificent oriel window of painted glass. There is the spiraling staircase up to the observation chamber. The centerpiece was the tower from where you could look down upon the world. Yeah, you can see it more clearly. Finally, it finds form as a great abbey in which Fontil plans to live. I wanted its scale, its moody romanticism to instill a sense of religious awe in the beholder. Uh, evergreens. Yeah. Font Hill Abbey is destined to become one of the most influential buildings of its day. A forerunner of the 19th century Gothic revival, paid for by slave profits. Glorious. Font Hill bribes workmen restoring Windsor Castle to come and build the abbey. Work goes on round the clock, just as in his sugar factories. There were never less than a hundred workmen or superintendents at the abbey, sometimes two hundred, and on one occasion five hundred. The abbey under construction at night was truly stupendous. 
there must have been hundreds of workers, some of whom were holding torches, swaying in the darkness, casting shadows high up on the tower, and down below into a gulf of darkness. And then you'd hear the their voices reverberating. Flamboyant homosexual guy back in Britain, that's over 400 years ago. That's, you know, like 400 years ago. But then, you know. So I remember growing up in Jamaica, you know, who were, you know, the loudest voice when it comes on to morality, decency, you know, and everything that is ethical, and um, all the things that goes when it comes on to the laws of nature and respect for the Creator. You know, um, it was Rastafarians. Now we have Rastas who are part of, yes, are part of this group of people who have terrorized our ancestors, use sexual terrorism against them, like Muta Baruka and Bujubantan. Yeah, Bujubantan. Yeah, remember, Bujubantan have done a song, says, Boom, bye, bye. And he withdrew it from his catalog because it says promoting it against um, men who have. You know, do that thing with other man. Yeah, man, man, pa man. But he refused to withdraw his songs that promote um, violence against our women. So it seems like this man more care about man, pa man, than man and, wom and a woman using a gun to hold her and take it. You know, and we have this man, Namuta Baroka, who used to be seen as an icon. I show that, hey, all of these guys come about. Rastas, these are. What you call the hungry belly, well, hungry belly rasters, all about money. No morals, no ethics, nothing. And it's all, they say it's all about um, the economy. Stupid, it's all about money. So they have no form of moral compass anymore. So these are not people that um, young people can look up to for any form of guidance. So you have heard um, about this man, William Beckford. So, you know, these are our white, so this is one of the most, um, back then, he's one of the, richest man in the world and it's based man it's our ancestors who were working in jamaica for this man and he was yes he was a prominent figure in jamaica's history was known for his ownership of nearly 1500 enslaved individuals and his involvement in plantation work so imagine one person who won 1500 black people you think a little bit of people that and that's how, much, that's how many people this man work, who are own, I have them working. I know when you are slaves, you don't get nothing. And we still don't get an apology from the Queen, from the monarch of England. I want to get a reparation to this day. So that's why I want to become a republic. Yeah, for these people, pay away. Because we, our ancestors, work and build their country and make them rich. And we deserve the best. We deserve an apology and we deserve reparation. Mark Golden never fell reparation because he's a part, he's a British asset and he's a mole, he's a spy. So however, what's however what's particularly intriguing is the juxtaposition of his wealth, William Beckford and status with his personal aspect of his life. This man was a flaming rear admiral in me. I tell you the Rab Peter, you listen to him. So consider this Beckford, William Beckford Ealing from Fontill, London, England stood as one of the rich, wealthiest individuals globally. Yet, amidst his opulent lifestyle, he harbored a secret that would have been perilous had it been not only exposed, but come to the fore. Yeah, man. Beckford was known to be a homosexual, a fact that could have led to severe per repercussion during his time. And you know the punishment for the homosexual back then, them hang ya. Yeah, but him have money. What are you going to hear it and all him to, you know, all the things that, that he have been through. You know, and how oh, everything ties with slavery. So while this man owns so many black people, he's in a, he lives in England and he was not on the plantation per se, my other people were operated. That's how corporation and all these things came about, you know. And factories, we, you know, our ancestors did that. Yes, Bilal, even the machinery and all of these things, because, but yet, see them say that we, our ancestors weren't civilized. They say that we came from the ape, but we know the truth. So, they are late. Charles Darwin, 
Yeah, one for him so all rotting, for him so all him dad L. So imagine the risk that Fontil, um, that William Beckford risk. He took on expressing his affection for a young man in me and Courtney through the art, through a heartfelt letter. In an era where homosexual was deemed taboo, punishable, even by death in England. Yes, 400 years ago, you know. Yeah, you're yeah, homosexual in England, them kill you. No, <laughs> you're yeah, homosexual in England, put you on a pedestal. So I saw them stay. So whilst um, in Africa and the Middle East, 400 years what stand, I see him thing right now. So William Beckford's vulnerability was profound. His letter meant to profess his love inadvertently reveal his sexual orientation, potentially endangering, endangering his life and reputation. Now leap, fast, fast, leap forward four centuries and the landscape has shifted while Beckford's era was rife with persecution for individuals like him. Today, today's world grapple with a different dynamic. Dynamic in some places, fear of persecution, be and sexual orientation persists. You have individuals who are fleeing Britain. Yeah, England, that's in Britain, seeking refuge, <laughs> refuge in Africa and the Middle East. Fearing that if they are not gays, they will be persecuted. <laughs> that is uh, really, yeah. If it, uh, the man never say that England, now, if them, if you are not identify as gay, it's like them have to persecute you. You can't say you're straight now. Uh, you understand? But eventually, still, you know, so the population keep going down, and what the world would be a brown world because you have to understand that white people love white white men love white men. And all, all of the country in Europe, the population is dwindling. So, you know, them. So, that's why them start war. You have to understand. You know, that's the reason why they start wars in places like like Syria. Anyway, like people are close to being white. So, the people them get displaced. So, one of the main reasons why them have all of these things, eh, you know, create wars. So that the people them can, people are close to their, you to the white people them, you. When we say we, you, we are talking them skin color. Uh, in in a figure of speech, you know, say you know, there's no white people on earth, but them just want to say them pure because whiteness is pure. Um, as you know, as Marcus Garvey said, I'm not no problem with white people as long as entirely people are white and them can't use wiping body. I just <laughs> Marcus Garvey said that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Marcus Garvey said, I'm not no problem with white people, and as long as him white as entirely people are still white, they enjoy using it wiping his ass. So <laughs> I just saw it go. You know, said them not like me. Marcus Gay, we are the best still doing you know? Believe you me. No other black man no great like him. And Marcus Boy, as Marcus, we say, if you read a Mar Marcus Gay, have a book supposed to be your Bible as a black person. Yeah, man. Because all them teach you, I love and teach you how to survive with them people here. So, you see where them, what they have done. And this is just, you know, part five, how, you know, what the um, white people, the English have done to our ancestors in Jamaica. You understand? So, so in some place, I will tell you, you know, when it comes on to this homosexual thing, it's been normalized, yes, and there, it's a something where the same people them, so see, them say we're free and we are independent, that's why we want to become a republic, but yet the white people, they might tell we, as black people, want to tell we, say, boy, hey, look, nothing wrong for you, go around there, you know, and we, and Dr. B, and tell them, say, look, the rectum is not a sex organ, it's an excretion of waste matter that the body do not want. We well, have to understand you know, when people mind the you know. Nothing about them, you know. Got them eat all. Oh, man, them eat all the brownies, if you understand what I mean. Yes, and that's why you have all. Hey, you remember, remember this youth? Um, I come from Crafts Hill in the Clarendon. When we lick out this girl, Batty Hole of England. We come from England. And him lure her Jamaica and kill her. Oh, a man. No. Him now, oh, a man. Uh, 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 I don't know if the police them arrest him and him thing. Eh? Oh, a man do all them something. Eh? Lick out a woman, batty wall. Because he want to have sex with her. And that's something that way. Eh? And she tells like some of them make it make sense to me. Oh, a man, um, in this day and age, big grown adults, like a woman lower him. So him lick out her batty wall, if he have sex with her. Oh, that. 
how him do that. So you know say you know, put him health at more risk when him do that because I remember saying you know, the body, you know, your body, everything will come out of your body. You know, God make our body in such a way that God makes certain around you so you don't trouble it. Because it's you know product that's where your body refuse. But this man, he met this woman from England, lure him. Met this woman, persuade him for him to look out her body wall because he wants to have sex with her. And then after that, when she got England now, she boasts and tell her friend them and send voice notes until it reached and become a public thing. And him lure her Jamaica and kill her. I, I don't remember if the police had arrested this man for, for doing the same. But oh, a man allow a woman to do that to him. It just mind boggling. The first time you hear them something and them think there were people, uh, when them say boy people, you know, lick out people, but you all, uh, white people, they, them think they are England, you know, the club them. I mean, I say them think they're sick. You understand? I don't know how people do them something there. And now me, I say something rampant to Jamaica now, in a ghetto. So no wonder why, I me, mean, I tell you. Oh, I'm, I, I tell you. So, you know, hey, and I discriminate, they are discriminating, you know, but, you have to understand that you know, we live in a different era now. You, know? you can just look on a woman, and especially if she's beautiful, that even make you have to be more cautious because we live in a different world. You know, and so um, William Beckford, what he was doing back then was taboo. <laughs> you understand? You know, you could have get the death penalty. Now, hey, look, in England, Man, I run with now because like if man are gay, if man are nothing. So, that's so we say for a beautiful day. We have come to the end of part five. Jamaica, Young Police Channel. Out.